Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we are doing Valley. This is our weekly CTF. As you guys know, I always upload the weekly CTF um, that we do in the Discord right before the live stream. So Saturday we'll be doing the live stream. This is going up on a Friday, I believe. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and cover the Valley CTF. If you guys like this content, hit that like button, hit that sub button, join the Discord, check out the Patreon. We got a lot of di different content going all over. Also, we are so close to 10,000. Thank you guys so much. I want to make a special video, but it kind of came up really fast. So I will be doing a special 10K video, but it'll be after the 10K. So just heads up on that. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this. So Valley is just a root to boot. You can see it's just what's the user, what's the root. So first, I just went ahead to quick in-map scan. And you notice it gave us port 22 and port 80. Excuse me. So... This is um, pretty typical, right? But there is a third port that's open. And <clears throat> on these easy boxes, you can run um, just a simple port scan. And if you get later in the box, you'll find that it actually mentions an FTP port. So you know you have to scan it again and find it. But um, I'll tell you, I don't know if it's these boxes or what it is exactly, but the in-map scans on these attack boxes to the actual um, servers. I don't know what it is. These specifically take forever. I don't know if they throttle their bandwidth on their side or what's going on, but I literally ran a port scan, just a port scan, no special syntax or anything for all the ports. And it was still running after an hour. So I was like, all right, I'm not running in map. I'm gonna try something else. So I did do rust scan. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with rust scan, it's just a little bit more um, quick. It's just a little quicker, um, but I'll do a whole video on rest scan if you guys want, but it's just a little quicker. So you can see I do it. I did it here and it comes back much faster. Like before it was taking, like I said, it literally was running still after an hour. And I was like, I'm not even asking for um, services or anything. I'm just literally running it. But, um, and you can see right here <laughs> in map more like slow map. So all it is, is just a little faster. Um, but you can see we have port 22, port 30, or port 80, excuse me, and then 37370. So it says it's an unknown service. That's perfectly fine. Um, that That's fine for now. But first, let's go ahead and open up our web browser and just check out the site, right? But I wanted to show you guys the in-map scan I ran first because I did run an in-map scan first and get those ports. And then later on, it mentions a um, FTP server or FTP service. So I was like, okay, well I missed a port somewhere. So I had to go back and rescan it. Um, usually on these e easy boxes, they don't have anything crazy, any um, wild ports or anything like that. So I didn't think much of it, but um, yeah, it was, it just saved some rework basically. All right, so we go to it. Looks like a little Valley photo company. Okay, pretty cool, interesting. Um, so here we we can go to the gallery and it doesn't look like there's anything crazy just a bunch of pictures um okay then we go to pricing and the first thing i noticed about pricing if you go to gallery check it out if you go to gallery see how there's a gallery.html file so if you go to just gallery looks like we just have the gallery html file nothing else there but we are able to access to the directories. So if we go to pricing and then we get rid of the HTML and just look at the directory, there's actually a note in here. Please stop leaving notes randomly on the website. Okay, that's fair. So that tells us right there that there's probably going to be um, a case of, there's gonna be notes that are helping us out through this, um, which is fine. That's that's good. That that means this site is still in development and they are still working on it as a team. So first thing that I'm going to do is obviously I'm going to run GoBuster. Um, and this is just to try and figure out the directories. So we're going to say, and I always just use the uh, default word list on the box um, when I'm doing these. You don't have to do this, but that's just what I do. You can use whatever, um, whatever one you want. But I always use the default one just because these are easy boxes. So keep in mind that they're not gonna make it insanely hard for you to find the information. Um, so we'll say www.10.232.56. So we run GoBuster. If you're not familiar with GoBuster, it's just trying all the words in this word, common.txt to see if the directories exist. 
You can see we get four or three errors for pretty much everything except for gallery, which we already covered, index, which we covered, um, pricing, we did cover that as well, and then static. So the only one we haven't checked out is static. So let's go back to the website and just heads up, I'm going to full screen this because we're going to need to get more involved in it. Okay, so we go back to the website and we check out the static and see what, what's in here. Because this one wasn't, okay, so there's nothing there. But here's the thing about CTFs, okay? Specifically, CTFs like this that are on easy. Um, there's a reason we can access that. And the reason I know that is because you can look and see that we're getting 403 errors with all the other ones. But gallery, index, pricing, and static are all, and we just did this on index, basically. Um, so that tells me something is here because... We checked pricing, and in that directory, there was nothing. Um, we checked gallery, there was nothing. So let's ch just go ahead and run GoBuster. And you, in a real um, world situation or a real, when I'm not doing a box for the channel, um, just meaning I'm making it a little faster for you guys, I may run GoBuster on all of these directories just to see. Um, but, or I may use like, in real world, I'll use Burp Suite and Crawl It and things like that. But, um, but here we're using the attack box so we're using what they're giving us so you can see here we have okay we have static and then we have all these directories with 200 error, error codes which mean they you know we were good but interestingly enough it looks like they're just numbered right so we have zero one two three etc cetera, etc cetera. so let's just start with zero because we you know we need to go figure this out so we'll say static zero oh it's another note dev notes from valley okay so add wedding photo examples okay redo the editing on number four okay remove oh what's this remove this dev file or path okay and then check for si similars so there's a couple of things information there's two informations here one this is a development server meaning it's not shouldn't be pr public yet um, but when they say check for similar, so that means number one, they haven't tested that yet. So if this was a real pen test, I might be like, okay, they may not detect me right now Two, if they haven't removed this, it's safe to say that most of the notes on this website are probably still in place because they haven't removed it. So let's check if they removed it. So we go to the directory that they put. Oh, wow. A login. Okay. So we don't have a username and password yet. So let's look at the page source and see how they're doing this. Um, looks pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple, um, using the login form, um, let's see, and it looks like they're using this dev.js script, or uh, JavaScript to do the, the login, so let's look at it, see if we got anything crazy, oh, and look at that, there's a username and a password that they still have hard-coded in here, and there's a, another dev note here that they have hard-coded in here. Okay, so sim dev and password California is here. And then on top of that, if we go back here, there was a note that was actually at this location. I didn't mean to put that um, quote there. Okay, so now we have dev notes for FTP server. So this is where you notice it says FTP server. We didn't find that in the first scan, so I knew right then I have to go back and find the FTP server. So dev note first, it says stop reusing credentials. Well, that's kind of a hint because we just found credentials. We found sim dev and the password California. Um, check for any vulnerabilities. So they haven't done that. Stay up to date on patching. So they're probably not patched. And then change the FTP port to a normal port. So that tells us it's kind of leading us in the right direction, right? It's saying, hey, we need to go to that uncommon port and log in using FTP, which is fine. We'll go ahead and do that and see what we get. There we go. Sometimes that pops up, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so we'll say FTP, and then we're just gonna say, what was the IP 10.10.232.56? 10.10.2, what did I say, 52? 232.56. Okay, and then the port was 37370, I believe. Okay, and then the username was sim dev and the password was all lowercase california 
Okay, so we're in. So now we list it, and wow, right away we have, they just give us three PCAP files. Now, when I did this box, I downloaded all the PCAP files and I looked at them. The first thing, I'll kind of give you guys some um, hints, I guess, if you will. So the first thing, the SIM FTP one, I didn't really take too much stock into that. And the reason I didn't is because we're already logged into the FTP server. So what am I gonna really get? Am I gonna get another user on the FTP server? Maybe. So I definitely downloaded it, but that wasn't the first one I checked. Then I checked the HTTP ones and there was only one that I found value in. So we'll go ahead and grab that one. So we'll say get sim HTTP 2.pcap. Okay, and you see it transferred. So now we're gonna open a new terminal. Okay, and it should be in this directory, there it is. So we're gonna say Wireshark sim HTTP 2.pcap. Let it open up here. And there's something specific about the way that the HTTP server was running that we can actually use to save us a lot of time on this Wireshark analysis. And you'll see what I mean. So we're looking for, um, since it's HTTP, not HTTPS, we know it's coming in clear text. So we're looking for usernames and passwords here. Well, the nice thing here is we know that the way they were doing their um, authentication, they were using a post um, request and using that script. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say HTTP.request.method and we want it to be equals post. And what this is, is it's gonna show only post requests. Cause if you look right now, there are thousands of requests that you have to go through. Now you could go through and find which ones look obscure and all that jazz, but there are so many. So we just say, hey, just show me the post request because that's the only ones I care about. Now, which one do we look at? Well, you can see these are all OCSP protocol, but there's only one that's HTTP protocol. So that's the one I'm gonna take a look at. And then if you've never done this, always follow the TCP stream so you can read the whole thing because otherwise you're just gonna see the one packet. Okay, and then we look at the stream and we see, okay, so there was a post request sent. Do, 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 oh, wow. And then there's a U name and a PSW. I'm going to assume that's username and password. Now, keep in mind, this is usually where a lot of websites, they have these different variables they're declaring and this script is declaring them in whatever way they want. But this one is pretty obvious. It's uname and PSW for password. So we have valley dev and PSW is photos one, two, three, four. So right away, we pretty much have something, right? Now we could try and FTP into it again and see if we get any other files. Um, but we don't have to, we can actually go ahead and try and um, SSH because there is SSH open if you remember. Now, also with the first, just so you guys are fully aware, with the first um, username and password we found, I did try and SSH into that as well. Um, so the re I'm skipping some steps that I would normally do because they don't go anywhere um, so that you guys don't have to. So SSH, valley dev, and then at 10, 10, 2, three, two, or was it two, five, two, two, three, two dot five, six. Okay. Dot five, six. And then the password for this one was, what was the password I have? It's, um, do, 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 do. I'm just pull, pulling up my notes here. So I have the password, so I didn't have to save it. Um, okay. So the password is photos P H zero T zero S one, two, three, four. Okay. Now we're in as Valley dev. Okay. So keep that in mind. This is Valley dev. We hit LS. We cat the user dot text and there's your first flag right there. THM, uh, Cali in the Valley right there. Cali in the Valley. There's our first flag. So first one, pretty easy, right? We, we just kind of followed the breadcrumbs got right in, but now we need to escalate our privileges. So normally here I would, go ahead and do uh, an LS, or not LS, I'm sorry, a sudo tech L, see if we can run sudo. Well, we can't run sudo with this user. I would start looking at um, Chrome jobs and things like that. Um, but this one, we actually, if we go back in the home directory, you can see LS tech LA. These are all directories except for this Valley, or this, uh, excuse me, the Valley Authenticator one, okay? So that's weird only because 
why do you have an authenticator uh, script or program or whatever? So let's go. It's the one thing that sticks out. So I talk about a lot on my channel, um, especially during live streams. Cybersecurity is just looking for patterns and anomalies. There's an anomaly here. There is in the home directory is all the users home directories and then a random authenticator application. So right away, we know something's weird. So we need to grab it. So let's take a look at it. So Python 3, tech m HTTP.server. This is just telling us to serve it up on a server for us. And then we can wget it um, if you want. I always do this because I like to physically be able to see it. All right, and we say HTTP and it's 10.10.43.88 and then port 8000. And was it not port 8000? It is port 8000. 10.10.43.88, isn't that my IP? Interesting, okay. So it's not actually allowing me to go to it, which is odd. Oh, probably because I'm putting my own IP address in and not the box IP. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? There we go. So there's the value authenticator. You can see that all three are directories except for this one. So we're gonna go ahead and download that one. Okay, perfect. Now we'll just open that so we have it. Okay, so we've got this value authenticator app. Now the first thing, we're gonna go ahead and close that so it's not still serving up. So we can close this, exit, clear. All right, so we had the Valley Authenticator app there. Now, the first thing I always do whenever I'm trying to figure out what an application is doing is run strings on it. And that's just basic, very, very basic reverse engineering, um, malware analysis, whatever you wanna call it. Um, analyzing the application, strings is very common. So we're gonna hit strings and you see, okay, we're getting a bunch of gibberish, gibberish, excuse me. But there's one thing we see right here. Down at the bottom, it says UPX, UPX. Well, anyone that's been around the industry for a long time knows a UPX file is just a, a, an exe, Jesus, I couldn't think of the word, an executable that's been packed, right? So we can actually unpack this and take this if we know the format, which we do, a UPX. So now all we gotta do is we gotta say sudo apt install UPX and I don't know if they intended a different route on this. This is just how I did it. And the reason I say that is because usually the attack box has everything you need. This is the first time I've had to actually install something on the attack box to get what I want, but this works just fine. Um, so you say sudo apt install UPX. This will install the UPX. And then once it's done, we will actually use UPX to um, take get the actual file in the contents the way it was written and then we can actually find what we're looking for now this should be relatively easy but the key here is when you're doing ctfs look for these clues there's a reason they put at the very bottom upx upx because all the rest is gibberish right and if you've ever used a upx file you know right away okay i gotta do something i gotta unpack it right now all the rest, yep, nothing. I don't see anything crazy. Now you could get a little bit wild if you wanted and change the strings to less or more characters and try and see if you found any more. You, you would mess around with this a little bit. It wouldn't be just an instant um, ding, ding, ding. But when they do it twice like that at the very bottom, just think of how when you're creating, if you've ever created a CTF or when you're creating a CTF, think about how they're creating it. They have these things in mind. These aren't random instances. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so when I say they're not random, I mean, it, it would be very uncommon that UPX exclamation point ends the, the file randomly, right? So now we say UPX D Valley Authenticator. Okay, so it went ahead and did it. So now we do strings again on Valley Authenticator because now it's the actual file and we look Okay, so now we're seeing it's actually at least real human readable. Now, here's the problem. It's uh, it's so big that we go up to the top and we can't see all of it, right? So now we could do more, we could do less where we can scroll through it, but 
what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a username or a password or something. So we're going to say strings authenticator and then we're going to say grep and we'll just grep username. Okay, so there's an actual prompt. This is what is your username? So let's find out. We want to know what's around that, right? So we'll say tack B for before and I want five lines before and then tack A for after. I want five lines after. Oh, interesting. So now it's what's your username? What's your password? But here there's two hashes right next to that. So let's go ahead and save these bad boys because those are probably our username and password that we need. So we'll go ahead and save them. File, save as, and we'll just save them as hashes. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we've got hashes, which anytime you have hashes, you should try and crack them. So especially on a, uh, a box like this where they're kind of leading you to the hashes. So now we'll just say John the Ripper. Hashes is the file. I always tab it just to make sure I get it right. And then tack W for word list and the word list on any CTF on Triacme, the word list is almost always, it's gonna always be in Rock U. So we say word list, Rock U. Now with these ones, because they are in a specific format that um, you have to specify, you just say format, and then you'll say equals raw MD5. And these are MD5 hashes, that's why you have to specify it. We say boom. Okay, and then we got valley, they cracked it. And we have Valley, and then we have Liberty123. So Valley, we remember, was a user on the box. If you remember when you're on here, if you look, Valley actually is the user that owns this Valley Authenticator. So Liberty123 is the password. So what if we just switch users? What if we say switch users to Valley, and what was the password? Liberty123. So switch user, now Liberty123. Boom, we're in his valley now. Okay, so we've just basically laterally moved. So now we know what, that we want to try and privilege escalate to root. So we say sudo l liberty123. Okay, so we're not allowed to run sudo with her or him, valley, whoever that is. So let's look at the Chrome jobs, see if there's any jobs that are running um, on a cycle. So we say Etsy Chrome tab. I don't know why it wouldn't do that one. Okay. Interesting. So there's one. It runs every minute. I will tell you this. If you're ever on a CTF and you see it, something running every minute, it's probably your answer. The reason is it's not common for anything to run every minute. Um, it does happen. It's possible, but it's not common. So um, we have Python 3, photos, photos, script, photos, encrypt.py. So let's go ahead and cat that and see what we get. Photos, script, photos, Dot pi. Let's see what we get. Okay, very small script. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so the first thing I see is it's importing base64. So first, let's see if we can write to it, right? ls tech la photos script. Um, okay, so we can't write to it. We can only read it. So that means we can't mess with it, but it's importing base64. So can we edit the base64 import that it's doing. Well, let's find out. So first, let's find out what, what is writable that we have, right? So we have writable. We're gonna find all the writable files to dev null. And remember, we, we're looking for just the Python modules because this will give you every file that's writable on your system. Um, you don't necessarily want that because uh, you do, but you don't want it in this context because you'll get a bunch of them. So we're just going to grep for Python. We'll let it run for a bit. So all it's doing is looking for writable files here. The two dev null that just gets rid of errors because every time you try to go to a directory that's going to basically that you don't have access to or something like that, you're going to get a permission error and it's going to just be error, 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 error. So the two dev null says, hey, all errors send to nothing so that we don't get it. And right there, user lib python 3.8 base64.py. So we can actually edit the base64 import. Okay, really, really cool. So we can actually manipulate that. So now all we have to do is go to this base64. So we say nano user lib python 3.8 and we say base64.py because we want to edit this file 
Okay. And we can see there's import RE, import struct, import binary ASCII characters. Okay. So we're going to go down and we're going to add our own import. So we're going to say, hey, let's do this. We'll go ahead and say import. And we're going to say import OS. And then when we import the OS, we're actually going to, we can edit the file so we can make it do whatever we want. So we're going to say os.system. And this is just a reverse shell that, um, that's been around. I have this on my cheat sheets for the Patreon on the uh, shells tab. So if you ever need this, there it is. Now we say bin. If you're wondering where I'm getting it, that's I get it from my notes of common shells that I have. Um, text C. And that's what I'm copying it from now. So tag I. And I can type dev TCP. And then the we need to set up a listener here. So we'll set up our listener. So we'll say netcat LVMP one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's listening on one, two, three, four. We're gonna do the same port. So our IP is 10.10.43.88. And then the port is one, two, three, four. And then we say, go ahead and redirect and one. So now we've got this the actual um, reverse shell here with our IP, our port. We're gonna say exit, save, and then save it as that file. Now we wait because it's gonna take, it runs every minute, remember that. So if you just caught it on a weird time or something like that, you're going to get a weird, where you're sitting there waiting for a full minute. So we'll sit here, we'll wait, we'll see if it pops up. And we should, if we did it all correctly, get a reverse shell. So what that means is now this right here, this Chrome job, when it runs every minute, it's going to run Python's photos, script, photos, encrypt, da, da, da. And it's going to, the first thing it's going to do is import this base 64. Well, when it imports that base 64, we just edited the base 64 to actually give us, as you can see, a bash shell. So now it runs it. It says, hey, and now look at this. Now we say cat. Well, it actually worked, which is incredible that I, cause I tabbed it and it didn't look like it worked, but it did. So that's kind of funny. Um, so try hack me Valley of the shadow of privilege escalation. So right there we have root. So that's it guys. This is a pretty fun box. It's pretty simple, pretty, um, easy. Took about 25 minutes, but keep in mind, there's a lot of, um, I don't want to say rabbit holes cause there's on this box. There wasn't a lot that you can like dive into, but there is some, that you can, you know, like like the Durbuster where you might do, or GoBuster where you might do the directory traversal and you might do it for all of those directories that take some time, um, all that stuff. But other than that, the box was pretty straightforward. They kind of lead you directly to it. So hopefully you guys like the content and hopefully you guys like the weekly CTFs that we're doing. If you want to be a part of them, just hop in the Discord and every week on um, Saturday nights, we live stream in the Discord. It's a discord exclusive thing and we hop in there and we cover the weekly ctf so it's it's a lot of fun it's something we do so hopefully you guys enjoy it and hope you guys have a great day thanks